Hello and welcome to part 2 of the uh, Real Engine 4 leveling system. Uh, in this tutorial we're going to go ahead and start the project and get stuck into um, getting the enemy set up, getting the line choice set up, just some preliminary stuff and then we're going to start taking a look at the math behind it. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new project here. I'm just going to call this um, levels and it's going to be a first person. So I'm going to go ahead and create this project and just give that a minute. Now, um, this is, uh, I based the level scaling off of the Borderlands 2 leveling system, which takes the current character level uh, and adds one to it. So if you level one, it becomes level two. So the, the level that you're going to, basically. It then, it then takes that number to the power of 2.8 and then times that number by 50 or 60. I chose to go with 50. Borderlands 2 uses 60, I'm interested with 50, and then it takes away 60. However, I decided to skip away that take away 60 step. But we'll get to the math in a minute. So we've got a new uh, project open here. Let's go ahead. First thing we want to do is simply create an enemy. So i um, just going to grab one of these cubes. I'm uh, going to go ahead and make him into a blue. We'll change his texture so we can tell which one it's going to be. He's going to be the black cube. Uh, the black cube's going to become a new blueprint. We're going to call this guy enemy BP. So we've got ourselves an enemy there sorted. That's that step done. Now let's start getting into just a little bit more complicated stuff. So it's going to go on over here, find uh, the character blueprint. And what we want to do is get rid of this projectile nonsense. This is all just, you don't actually have to do any of this. This is, if you want to skip forward a bit, then that's cool. But this is just, um, just some stuff to make the whole process a little bit easier later on. And I'll talk you through what I'm doing here. Now, if you haven't seen my line trace tutorial, this explains in greater detail what I'm about to do. Um, so, yeah, if you've not seen that, I recommend that's a good watch. So, let's go ahead and get a... Oops, sorry. A single line trace by channel. Um, we also want to get the get player camera manager. And off of that... We want to get actor location. Oops, actor location, and we also want to get the forward vector. It's not the forward vector. It's get the actor forward. Get actor forward vector. Sorry about that. Those two. Okay, so this one we want to times by a float. Um, we're going to select 5,000 for this float. Sorry if I'm going a bit fast here. I'll stop. If you want to, if you want to look in greater detail at what this is, please just go and check out the single line trace tutorial. It's all on there. Um, but I am going to rush through this bit now, and I won't be explaining much of it. But basically, if you want to see what I'm doing here, pause the video, carry it, like copy through with it. But if you want me to go and explain it and what it does, so that you can learn from it, uh, it's best that you go ahead and check out that tutorial over there. So we want to add this to the top one here, and that becomes our end. With the start becoming this here. Okay. So <clears throat> now we're going to go ahead and start taking a look at what we can do from here. So let's jump into the game, quickly demonstrate what we've got. We've got, oops, uh, if you'd like to, you can toggle this here so that you can see the lines that you're shooting. So if I go ahead and shoot now, you can see where my lines are hitting. You can see the things that I'm hitting and the things I'm casting through there. So what all we've basically done is change the shooting system to a line trace because that's much easier to work with than projectiles. So let's go back into our first person character here. And the out hit, so this is the thing that's hit. We're going to break this hit result into everything that's hit. And we're basically looking here for a hit actor. So out of this, we're going to cast to enemy. So if it hits the enemy blueprint, the cast is going to be true, not failed. So out of cast is true. We want to do a couple of things before we start looking into this. Now we're going to need three new variables. So the variable we're going to go with, they're all going to be of the type integer. And this one's going to be current level. And we're going to start that at 1. We'll compile this, change its default value to 1. We're going to need another variable, again of the type integer. And this is going to be uh, current XP. That's going to be set to zero to start with. And then we're going to finally need a third integer, which is um, XP to next level. 
So this is the amount of XP that you need to level up. We'll start off with setting this to something like 100. These, these values can all be changed by you, these don't have to be 100. These integers, just play around with them once you've got the thing up and running. See when you find a leveling system that's kind of right for you. Um, but yeah, so let's go ahead and start with that. So now that we've got, well now that we've cast the enemy blueprint, so if we've hit the enemy, what are we going to do? Well the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set the current XP. Set. Oh god, okay, let's get current XP out here. Set it that way. So we're going to set the current XP to whatever it already is, so which is zero, plus, and then now this is this is where uh, a game like World of Warcraft or Borderlands, when you kill a certain mob, it'll drop say 10 XP, but a different mob will drop 20 XP. Now in this case, we're using a static XP, so every enemy we hit will give us 100 XP. Um, in those games, you've kind of got things. You've kind of got the blueprint communication, which I've got another tutorial about casting back, saying, "Okay, I'm worth 20 XP, or I'm worth 15 XP, or a big boss, I'm worth a thousand experience points." But in this case, it's all static. So if we killed a boss, or if we killed uh, a slug, you know, they're all worth 100 XP. So we're going to set our current XP to current plus 100. So that'd be zero plus 100. So to start with, we're on 100. If you kill a second mob, you've got 100 plus 100 again. You're on 200 XP. Okay, moving on from that. Um, before I totally kill myself with breath there. The next thing we want to do out of this now is we want to cast to the HUD. And in the default, um, what do they call it? Tutorial, not tutorial, you know the, what's it called? Oh, sorry about that, that's me, let me uh, quickly tab out and mute that Facebook. Okay, so we want to cast basically to the HUD. So I cast to first person HUD. And the object we're going to do, so we're going to get player controller and off the controller we're going to get hood and this gives us the player hood but getting a bit messy over here so I mean I'm just gonna rearrange these real quick so we can lay this out so we've got the player controller up we've got the hoods who's playing uh, player index zero so the first player the only player that's me where's his hood we've got his hood and we're gonna cast to it now what we're gonna tell it to do now we're gonna touch on this in the second video so I'm gonna kind of I'm gonna try my best there to leave leave that bit alone, we're going to look at building the strings in the second video. Now we're going to go on to do some of the math here, so what I really need to be doing now is we want to start with an event tick. An event tick is an event that is called every frame. So you can right click, event tick. So this action, every single frame, every time you call a new frame, it does this. So if you're running at 60 frames per second, this will happen every 60 seconds. So what do we want to happen every 60 seconds? We want two things to happen. So we're going to first of all branch off into a sequence. It's going to call one of them first, then call the second. And it, it will do both of them before it updates the frame, so don't worry about that. Now we're going to have a branch here, which is a, an if statement effectively. And now what we want to do is we want to have a um, integer more than or equal to. So what, what, what do we want to check? We want to check if the current XP is more than or equal to the XP to next level. So here's an example. Let's say the XP to next level is uh, 500 and your current XP is 400. Every frame, it's going to call false here because you're not above the threshold and you're not equal to the threshold. If you are at 500 or above, it will then start to call true. Now, what are we going to do? So when, when we've killed five monsters, we've got our 500 XP, we're going to do, we're going to call a custom event. So I'm going to right click up here and go custom event. And custom events really help to keep things uh, streamlined within your code. So the custom event we're going to call here is level up. We're going to name it level up and we're going to call it here. So when we're at the right time, we're going to call level up. And there's a few things that we want to do within level up. After, I mean, we'll touch on that actually afterwards. We'll come up here and set that out afterwards. We'll carry on with the, what happens when you reach the right amount of XP. We'll carry on with that line first. So the next thing you want to do is set the current XP to zero. So you've leveled up. Congratulations. You're back on zero. Do it all again. So you set your current XP now to zero. And then we're going to call a, uh, well, actually... What we're going to do is not do that. We're going to now take a look at a bit of the more complicated math. So we're going to set the XP to the next level. So what XP is now needed to the next level? So you could do the previous one at 100. So it takes two kills to get to two, three to get to three, four kills to get to level four. But that's really not 
how these kind of RPG borderlands world work. It's not how these things work, is it? So we're going to dive into some maths here. So the first thing we want to do for our maths is we want to take a current level, which initially is set to 1. So we have 1, and the first thing we want to do with this is plus 1. So basically we're working out to get to level 2 we need Sansa. So we've got we've got here the... Uh, so we've got a number 2 basically. And we're going to convert this to a float. I'm going to convert that to a float, and then we're going to call a function called power. So this basically uh, takes that to the power of whatever the uh, exp exponential is here. So this is going to be 2.8 if we're still going off what Borderlands says. So that'll be 2 to the power of 2.8, and then we're going to times that by an integer, which is going to be the value of 60 in the case of Borderlands 2, 50 in my case, I just thought 50 was a little bit better. And then we're going to convert that to an integer. And that, that's that's the maths behind the leveling system there. So you get a power of 2 point, to the power of 2.8, current level plus 1, uh, to the power of 2.8, times it by 50, and there's your current level. Now if you wanted to do it exactly like Borderlands 2, I'm using Borderlands 2 as an example, it's a very well known RPG. Off here you would have an, uh, a float, take a float, and you have the value of that, take 60. And then that would be your return value there. So let's let's go with Borderlands 2. Let's leave it to uh, copy in Borderlands 2 there. So that's that's now set to your XP to the next level. So that's really the math behind that side of things. Just got an auto save going on there. Just hold on a second. That's the math behind it. Now um, in the next video, I'm gonna I'm gonna leave this video here. That seems to be the maths all set up. Um, in the next video, we're going to take a look at printing the information we've got here. We'll set up the level up, and we'll take a look at printing the information that we've got here to the hood, uh, so that the player can actually see what's going on, um, and see that their XP is going up. Uh, I will be adding a tutorial at a later date, not today, but at a later date, where we can make an XP bar, as opposed to XP as text. Um, so stick around for that, and stick around if you want to hit next and go on over to part 2. We'll take a look at printing all this information to the hood and making it visible to the player. Thanks guys, and I'll see you in the next video.